Well, anyway, I just wanted to do another life experience video, and uh, that's what my channel's become all about. Um, man, I tell you, you know, fall down the stairs, break your neck, uh, live in the hospital system for two months, um, having to pay, you know, the government, everybody else, you know, thousands of dollars of bills coming in, uh, trying to to make ends meet, trying to survive, you know, dealing with your uh, divorce, uh, your ex-wife coming after you. The I mean, so it's uh, it's been crazy. Um, so anyway, this is just a knife of life experience, political slash video. Uh, I've been kind of studying the war in Ukraine. Uh, I don't think people really watch my channel to get updates on that, but uh, I predicted an end to the war by the end of August, and. Uh, you know, I don't think the war is going to be quite over by the end of August. I think it's just going to enter a new phase uh, where Russia is just going to like start really at that point advancing. You got to remember, Russia's only got about 15 percent of the military forces committed to the uh, war in Ukraine. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't think the. I mean, they are taking it seriously, obviously, but you know, I just don't think they felt like you know we needed to. You know, they've got a lot of interests in the world. They're an empire, just like the United States is. Or we're a diminishing empire, and they're a rising empire. <laughs> you know, whether you want to believe that or not. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, promote Russia. I, I think that Edward Snowden went to a good place. I think he's going to do better in Russia than he's going to do in the United States. That's for damn sure. Uh, now, you know, since he would be uh, in, a, in a prison here. And I worship the guy for what he revealed about how the government was spying on everybody. And, and then, of course, the mainstream media made him out to be a villain. Um, love Edward Snowden. Anyway, um, so life experience video. Uh, so today, you know, I mean, I woke up and, of course, you know, for me to get out uh, being handicapped and, you know, dealing with my issues, you know, it takes me a good two, three hours of preparation before I can get out the damn door. Because, uh, you know, I mean, once you're out and about, you know, where are you going to go? You can't go to a public bathroom or anything. So you got to make sure that, you know, all the business is taken care of. And uh, so I went downtown and uh, and you, you do what you want. Uh, even here in Florida, downtown Ocala, you know, there's, well, I mean, it turned out there was plenty of parking. I didn't know, but I, you know, I try not to get into the the main area of Ocala. You know, I, I parked up at a strip mall. And plus, I got to get my, my, my exercise and so yeah i can only walk a tenth of a mile <laughs> you know but but i wanted to walk my tenth of a mile and uh so anyway i parked up in a in a strip mall and just walked on down and uh so i got in there to to, to file the quick claim deed and uh you know and they're like oh yeah you, you've got everything and i thought for sure i mean the way these things always go is they always say Oh, but you don't have this piece of paper, you know, and I was expecting any second for them to send me out the door and say, you got to go get this or you got to go get that or you got to go get a copy of this. Nope, it didn't work out that way. Uh, but then I looked at the woman. I said, well, you know, do I need to, to pay anything here? You know, because uh, there's always money, always money involved in everything. And she goes, well, yeah, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's going to cost you $300 <laughs> to, to quick claim the house over into my name. It, my wife is the one that divorced me. I didn't have anything to do with it. I, you know, I was perfectly happy being married for 21 years, you know, not knowing that I was going to break my neck and almost die up in Lynchburg. And then she would have inherited everything. Thank God that didn't happen. But I mean, you know, and so, so I'm like $300. I said, what? And she goes, well, you don't want the IRS coming after you. And I said, well, yeah, I guess not. Now that they're hiring 87,000 new IRS agents. Oh, my God. The Democrats are all for it. Oh, my God. You know what? You know, I, I hope that every Democrat has an IRS agent breathing down their freaking neck. I, I, I hope that those 87,000, and I hope they come into their houses and they got guns to their heads because evidently they're heavily armed now. And I hope they come into every Democrat and they go, we want your money, buddy. And because uh, that's what they're going to do the rest of us. And uh, But luckily here in Florida, the free, the free state of Florida, uh, I think we're going to do um, uh, better than most. And uh, thank God. I hope every Democrat moves out of Florida. They, they need to move to California. I keep telling them, move to Illinois, move to New York. Go where you're happy, man. And in fact, uh, there was a buddy of mine, uh, 
He's a Democrat. He's moving back to Michigan. Uh, he's going to be under Gretchen Whitner. <laughs> well, the witch Whitner, you know, and so I'm real happy that he's gone. I mean, you know what? He was a good friend. And uh, political differences kind of parted our ways. Uh, and then, of course, you know, me being gone up in Virginia for eight months and that story. That's why I'm making this video because I can't, my, my channel can't just be about my story at the hospital and everything, although I want to tell it. And the only way I can do it, because I eventually want to make this into a, um, well, I'm, I'm going to write a screenplay about it. And I don't know. I mean, but if I don't document it while I think about it. So anyway, I guess that's, that's, that's kind of about it. So today was that. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, you know, each day uh, I've been home now, what, a, a little over a month, month and a half. Well, no, only a month and a week. And so each day, you know, being handicapped, all I do is I just plow forward each day uh, because my wife left a, a disaster and, uh, and I've, my, my life turned into a disaster up in Lynchburg, Virginia. And so all I can do is just, you know, buy new stuff. I mean, well, I mean, you know, today I'm a bachelor. I, I had these wonderful hamburgers that I had made in the freezer uh, before I left, that was seven months ago. <laughs> and and uh, you know what? I, I guess I'm proud of myself because I threw them away today. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, seven months being in the freezer, maybe they're still okay. And then I opened it up and they were in, you know, they were in a sealed carton and uh, no, they had freezer burn all over them. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to just bite the bullet and say, you know, life throws you on a different path and, so I, actually my freezer is becoming pretty empty, which is good because I, I make this wicked beef stew. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll have uh, Dave Rubin over or some of the, uh, the conservative people. I'll definitely get in touch with them on Truth Social or uh, Parlor or uh, Getter or you know, some of the social media channels just to see if they're interested in because uh, I, I am getting the house quickly, quickly in order. And uh, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, so... I guess that's it for this video. I just want to make a quick two second uh, thing about life. Um, what else did I, oh, so here's another one. I, I had all these, my wife, you know, she used to use all these rags for makeup. Oh my God. I mean, she had uh, bags, bags of rags. I mean, I was like, what the hell do we need all these rags for? You know, and so, so I went through and of course I have to wash everything in the house because I had bugs and I had an infestation here. And uh, so I was like, well, what am I going to do with all these rags? And I thought, you know what? The, the automotive shop down the street, they, uh, they, I'm good friends with them guys, and they've treated me well, and they helped me sell my previous car. I gave them the rags, you know, and they were happy to have them. I said, man, can't you guys use some rags? And so I gave them the rags. Um, so you think about it. I mean, you know, every time, I, of course, the garbage disposal and the, and the, the, the faucet that I just replaced, um, that's metal. And uh, so I took it to the metal recycling place today and dropped it off. I got $2, man. Um, you know, I, but the, it made me feel good that it didn't go to the dump. Okay, and yeah, was it about the money? No, it's just about making sure it gets recycled. And uh, so, and then of course I had these two metal tables. So every day I take stuff out of the house and every day I bring in new stuff to, to make my life here. And of course, every day I discover what my wife took you know like the air filters today I was I was realizing that you know I wanted to filter the air in the bedroom because it's kind of stale and yeah yeah she took the air filters and the backup air filters so you know oh I loved you everything I loved you everything that's what you hear when you're divorced anyway so uh and then of course the last thing is I mean I'm telling you that I can't get her tentacles out of all the bank accounts I, um, I sent in to, um, and I'm going to call them out, man, Pentagon Federal Credit Union. I sent in my paperwork to get her name off of my joint account. Now, you could always close the account and open it up in your name, and that way you get another person off the account. But when you've got automatic deposits, now, here's a, here's a little clue for you. Here's a little something, okay? You don't ever, ever, ever fuck with the government. Never fuck with the government. So my disability payments right now go into that account. Now, if I were to close that account and open up a new account, 
the government would go fucking batshit crazy. And I guarantee you I'd have I'd have IRS agents and Social Security breathing down my neck going, no, you're dead now. Or, you know, there, there'd be something that came up. You know, we got, you know, you, you owe medical bills. I mean, you don't even fucking know what's going to happen. So don't ever fuck with that account. So right now it's still in her name. And so what I got to do is I got to meet her somewhere, somehow, and get her to sign off on the account again. And this time, I sent it in before. I've already sent it in once. And they said, oh, we didn't get it. And that's the bullshit you face. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it's you roll the dice. You got to roll the dice with everything in life. So this next time, I'll send it in signature required, uh, a, a, you know, receipt verified so that I know that they got it and they're going to have to take her name off of the account, assuming that, because I got to meet a notary. You got to get a notary to get her damn name off of the account. And this is of anybody. This is why I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you ever get fucking married, I don't care if you're married 10 years, 20 years, mine was 21 years. Don't ever, ever put your spouse on the joint accounts. Don't ever put them, keep, keep your accounts separate. Keep her account separate and maybe have one freaking account where you pay the bills out of for the house payment and your, your utilities and shit like that. And then when the divorce happens, boom, you're done. Now, the, the danger there is, is that, uh, but, but you can always make your spouse a beneficiary on the accounts. I made them joint because it just seems so difficult dealing with my parents that, you know, when mom made me joint on her accounts, I thought, well, this is a good idea because it certainly did make life a lot easier for me to be able to deal with her banking situation. Anyway, peace out. Stay free. This is just another life experience video. You guys have a good one.